Hi, I'm Mark, I'm from Lawn Stripes and Hedges and today I finally get to unbox the Alit Sterling which I've had in my lockup for about a month. Um, so if anyone's seen me with Alit before they know that I trialled uh, the Sterling um, and when it went back I was pretty sad so I asked Austin if I could buy, <laughs> if I could buy one uh, and I was very lucky to get one because I know they were struggling for stock at the time. Um, so today I wanted to unbox it with you uh, and show you what it's like opening everything from brand new because I got it as a full unit last time so it'd be nice to see everything in the box and uh, I'll show you how it all goes together. So before I open it uh, I just wanted to mention how well it's actually put kind of together. So I've bought about 10 or 15 lawnmowers since I started my company and normally come in a bit of a cardboard box so I was, I was very surprised in regard to how it's actually uh, been packed and it's really good actually. So we'll open it up. First thing we get to see are the beautiful handles, which I'll uh, clip these out now. <coughs> These are all the gubbins to put it all together. I'll keep them to the side. Oh wow. The bag. And then here we in the box bottom we have the uh, the machine. <coughs> and while we uh, put it all together, I'll get my lovely assistant Joe to uh, stick this battery on charge. Do you want to go and stick this on, mate, at the bottom of the garden? Fucked over there. <coughs> All right, okay. <coughs> One thing I would say as well, obviously, with the Sterling being a, an eco-friendly mower, I'm quite pleased with how little plastics actually it's in the uh, packaging, it's all kind of recyclable, which is good. Right. Yeah. So I will lift this out <coughs> and then we'll see. it all goes together. Okay, so once we've got it all out the box, it's pretty simple to go together. So literally you see these little grooves there that which slides through. So then I'll get my cable and as I feed this through, there's like a little uh, receiver on this side. Easier. Take this little uh, stop out, and it might be easier to get in. There we go. So now, if I feed the wire through, through there, and then clip it in. In fact, I'll clip that in first, so it might be a bit easier. With these little plastic clips, it's always important so you can hear the click to know that it's fully uh, fully in. Yeah, there you go. So slide this back in and feed the wire through. <coughs> there we go. There we go. Once that's in place, you've got the cover here and the, and the uh, bolts to go with it. So that just sits over the top of it. <coughs> there we go. No. Hang on, I've not got that right. There we go. There we go. There we go. <coughs> 
And you've got the four little bolts in here. They're on an Allen key, and then you've got the Allen key in the bag as well. So these already have the bolts at the bottom of them, so you're just literally just putting them in, feel when they're going in, and then pull your Allen key out just to nip them up. Okay, so once I've um, got the handlebars on, there's a little uh, bracket here that says handle tie bar assembly, which I only assume is for support, put a strength. So I'm gonna put this on here, um, which is dead easy to put on by the looks of it. Again, you've got the uh, Allen key with it. I'll load that up, nip it up, and then put it in this side. I think what this will also do as well is stop the handlebars from when you unclip them falling all the way back, which would be pretty good, especially when you're in and out the van. As soon as I've got it nipped up, get the Allen key tied up. and tight and see if my theory's right yeah so it's just a, a little support bar um, I think we're pretty much ready to go we just need to build the uh, the grass box up these uh, wheels that come in it are for if you're taking the front roller off <coughs> which brings me onto my front roller I've wanted to get my hand on one of these for ages it's the grooved roller we'll see how good it is but uh, it looks amazing, which is always important. So I'll, uh, I'll give that a go in a sec. Um, so let's get the grass box made up. Uh, we'll check the blades right, and uh, we'll go over the cartridges as well, which, uh, which I've also purchased. <coughs> little, uh, little instructions there. There's a little bag in here with four little, looks like very important bits, which I'll have a look at in a second. Well, there you go. So straight away I can see that there's four holes, so I'm assuming they go in there. So let's not assume and let's look at the uh, instructions. So we've got that, that. All right, yeah, so then these go that on first, which is through there, that on there. All ah, right, okay, so they just go through there, them little little pins, um, and then the other one, which is there. So let's make sure I've got this the right way around. So, oh, look at that, P perfect first time. So we've got these in the in the bag. Uh, I've just put one on just then, just to see how easy it was. So basically, you just line it up with a hole, get a pair of pliers, and then pops in. I'd probably put it through a little bit more. But yeah, it's gone through that. And then again on these ones, so line it up with your hole. Might be easier. Mm. 
There you go. So it's just a bit of uh, once it once you pops in, you, you're fine. Okay, so they are. If you have a look on them as well, if you have a little zoom in, one side slightly chamfered. So if you put that side in against the hole first, it makes it a lot easier. Um, I suppose you might need a. Uh, it can be quite fiddly, as you can see. But there you go. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Right, so that's on. So now let's. Uh, I'll just double check them all to make sure that they are all okay. Yep. 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 So, <coughs> so now, time for the uh, the grass box to go on. So I do know that that's the top. There we go. So it's not actually as hard as it. <coughs> I thought this. I thought it was going to be a bit tougher than this to put on. Uh, once it's on, you have these little plastic clips on the. Uh, outside of the bag so again they can be quite fiddly if you don't know what you're doing with them so I just start on one side and then clip it on like that Make sure it's pulled nice and tight to get the sides on. It's just the sides now. Yep. We're on to the uh, last one now. I'm going to put that side on first, it might be easier. There you go. Perfect, done. So there is one on the inside as well, which I've clipped on. Um, as you can see there, try not to forget to put that one on. And just make sure that that's clipped on, which it all is. And now we're, we're ready to go mowing. So before we do start mowing, I just want to check the blade is at the right, um, is the, whether it's cutting right or not. So there is two literally flathead screws at the top which set the blade. So I'm just going to nip them up probably one they have little notches on them. <laughs> so I'm going to use a piece of paper just to see if the blade's cutting uh, nice and neat. So it's not. So yeah, so these uh, some flat-headed screw uh, bits here, which I'm just going to notch up one time and just see if that uh, starts cutting it. So you want it just hovering above the cutting blade enough so it's cutting the paper. So it's cutting it perfect on that side. So this side just needs a little one notch. <coughs> perfect. Oh, just check that. Just needs knocking up on that back end a little bit. Perfect, there we go. So now we know when it's cutting the lawn, it's cutting the blades very, very clean. So we know we're not gonna get any damage uh, on your lawn where, you know, via the uh, blunt blade. So we can get going now. <clears throat> Before I do get going, I wanna show you the handlebars because obviously these have just they've come out the box. So these are, uh, I think there's three settings on this if I'm not mistaken. 
So I'm just going to put it on the first one, which clip in there and then clip in there. <coughs> and then depending on how tall you are, there's different sections <coughs> on here as well. So I, I, I'm, again, I'm just going to have it on the second one. Uh, that's pretty much perfect for me. It's not going to give me a backache and I know I can be on the mower for quite a long time. So we have the battery for it, which has just been on charge. So this is a 56 volt, 10 amp hour battery. The last time we tested it, I think we had a 7.5 uh, and we did get quite a, well, we got this lawn and next door's lawn out of a full battery, but I did decide to go for a slightly, slightly bigger, bigger amp hour on this one, just so we get a little bit more uh, cutting time. Uh, I do know they do a 5 amp, 7.5, 10 amp, and I think they do a 12 amp as well, that might be a 12.5. Um, I just went for the uh, the second to largest, so and it's a bit, bit heavier. Uh, the reason I chose battery is obviously the way the world's going, trying to be sustainable. Uh, it's a lot cleaner as well. Um, you can get out in the mornings earlier, you can uh, get your jobs done earlier because you can get out because it's quiet, you're not starting a big petrol mower. So uh, my lads get out at seven in the summer because they want an early finish batteries the way for that because they can batteries on charge overnight come to the job do the job get finished early and uh, all thanks to beautiful batteries so um, before I put the battery in I'll tell you a bit about the charger which I'll just grab here so I went for the rapid charger because of my business uh, and the lads jump from job to job um, they can pop this on charge while they're doing the borders and within 30 minutes it's charged so I think it may be a little bit more for that one but for us it was it was invaluable because we we had to get something that was charging the batteries up quick so then we could get on to the next job we do have a couple of batteries that we can flat flip between the two but these do go in like the other um other products so they go into like the leaf blower the strimmers um which is I think it's the ego range they go into which is good but uh we'll get this in now and we'll uh, we'll show you what it's like so before we literally just put it in you slide it in little click and it's in and then before we do get mowing we just want to sort the height of cut out so <clears throat> this is the first time we're using the sterling on this lawn so because of that we want to kind of just ramp it up a little bit high just so we don't scold the lawn and cut it too short. So we're just gonna bang it up to about 40 uh, and just see how we go with that. So we are there. What is good about this one as well is compared to the one that I had, it's got a bit a much uh, deeper and a much longer height of cut because uh, I had the test model. So um, it's much better and the, uh, the mechanism to use, it's very smooth as well, um, which is great. <coughs> what, um, what we would normally do as well uh, is just check the front rake. So if you're moving your height and height of cut up or down, you just need to make sure that the front rake is is this is at the right level, uh, which I will do another video on that uh, in the future. If anyone you know, put put it in the comments if you want to show me how, if you want me to show you how to do it, um, or there is plenty of videos out there from Alec that show that. So we'll get cutting now and we'll uh, we'll see what it's like afterwards. One good thing about the sterling that I really like is the, the you can alter the speed as you're actually going. So this is kind of a nice pace for me, but I know some of my other lads like to go a bit slower. So because we can also change 
the height of the handlebars, as you can see then, it's easy to move, remove, maneuver around trees. Another really good tip um, when you're scarifying, because you want to get as much thatch out as, as, as you can without going over it a load of times, is wind it right back to kind of the first setting. So that's a really good speed for scarifying. <coughs> and you can just knock it up again and off you go. So with the glide drive system as well, which is really good when you're coming around trees or you want to manoeuvre the, the, the machine around, you just literally pull it round. So <coughs> anyone that's had a liberty, they knows you have to kind of rock it back to kind of um, engage the, the, dra the uh, like the drive, whereas this, it's just back and forward, nice and easy, no problems. So it just makes a job like this really easy. And what it's good for as well is not damaging the, uh, the lawn as you turn it round. Gonna make it. Another really good feature as well about the Sterling is the Pro Drive system, where you can independently use the motor as the rear wheel from the rear wheel and the blade as well. Um, a lot of our customers have like a stony path, so we can just literally lift the front end up and use it rather than have the the blade spinning as well. Because if you catch a stone there, you're going to damage the blade. So it's a really kind of really good feature that they've added to the Sterling. <clears throat> the other thing I want to mention is the battery. So. This had three bars in it, so this lawn is 165 square metres, just, just this lawn, uh, and we've lost one bar of battery. So that lawn, I think, is 275, it's like 100 more, because obviously around the trees. So this one battery, I'd easily get this lawn, that lawn, and next door's done, and we'd still have half a battery left, which is uh, why we went for the 10 amp hour, uh, just to give us that little bit more. So, And the old battery used to get this lawn, that lawn and next door lawn out of a full battery and that was only the five amp hour I think I may add five or the seven so already just using this just cutting this one we've we've only lost a bar on this whole lawn which is really good okay that's the unboxing done but before I let you go I want to show you how quick it is to change the cartridge so I know <clears throat> we put a video on I think we I think me and Austin have done one that's done millions of hits, but I want to kind of show you again because it's awesome. Literally, to change the cartridge is the two handles up, release the belt, and that's it. So for anyone that's in the lawn care industry and they've got a scarifier, an aerator, a dethatcher, it's literally as easy as getting the cartridge, sliding it up, clipping them in, and then tightening the belt back up, which clips in. So <clears throat> the only thing I'd probably say is when you are scarifying, I always take the rake off the bottom because um, the, the rake sometimes gets stuck as you get trying to get low with the, uh, with the cartridge. Um, and that was probably a little bit slow for me because I'm normally really quick at it, but um, I've not touched this mower in about four or five months. So um, yeah, so it was a little bit slow, but I'm sure I'll get quicker. So this, law, this mower, um, will probably be the last time I touch it because it's going to go to one of my lads who do garden maintenance uh, and he's, it, that's what I've bought it for really so it'll go on the garden maintenance van uh, and we have some lovely houses around here in Presby that we look after um, so this mower will be, be out working now every, every, pretty much every day, Monday to Friday um, working its, uh, earning its money so yeah, drop a little message in the comments of what you kind of think of the mower uh, and um, whether it'll think it'd be beneficial to you and your company especially with the battery power because I know a lot of pe some a lot of people are kind of wondering whether to do it or not so it'd be great to see what people's feedback is it and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video one thing I'm really excited about 
he's trying all my cartridges so i will do a video uh, on these different cartridges on my social so keep a little eye out for them but what be good if you drop a little message in the comments in which one you want me to try out first and then we'll uh, we'll give it a go